<sighs> it's cold in here. Oh, hang on a sec. Mm, that's much better. Hey guys, welcome to Film Lemon, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learn good. And man, did I have some issues getting this episode done. In between my full-time job, I had to complete two other paid jobs this week. One of them I had to shoot, edit, and present in less than 48 hours. All the while trying to get this, the most requested effect in film learning history. And if I start posting all the people who requested this, we'll never finish the show. So here's a random subscriber's request. James Logan Howlett asks, I would love to see a firestorm effect. This one was a tough nut to crack, guys, especially to make it easy. I tried tracking my hands and using stock footage, animating mesh warps and all that jazz, but as I was slamming my head into my desk repeatedly, a thought occurred. They wouldn't use real fire assets on the show, they'd use a 3D fire simulator, right? So I went and got one called Turbulence 4D. I then used a rigged model of a hand to act as both a hand reference for my actor and as an emitter, configured the fire settings to my liking, and this is what we got. A hand on fire, which you can download below. Now guys, this particular plugin has a demo version I've linked below, but I won't be covering how to make the fire. I'll link you to another YouTuber's tutorial because the plugin itself is pretty expensive and the demo leaves a watermark on your footage, so it's basically useless. However, we got our fire. So in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor performing the flame on action like this and then keeping their hands relatively still. As I mentioned before, Download those fire assets, and it's time to make this effect happen. To After Effects! Alright, let's start things off with the eyes. For starters, head up to Layer, and add two null objects, renaming them Right Eye and Left Eye. We'll then select our footage layer, scrub to a point where our head is completely still, head over to Tracker, and hit Track Motion. We'll then select a point on our right eye, hit the play button, We'll then head backwards and go frame by frame, making sure that the track doesn't fail. If it does, we'll just drag the track point back into position. Once you're happy, hit edit target and select the right eye null. Hit apply and OK, and then we'll repeat the same process for our left eye as well. We'll then turn off both nulls for now and we'll save them for later. Next, let's hit Control D and duplicate our footage layer. We'll then trim that layer to start when we want our eyes to flame on. Next, let's zoom in and then scrub on the timeline until we find a clear spot where our eye is completely still. We'll then head up and grab the pen tool and draw two masks around each of our eyes. We'll then right click on the mask and select track mask and hit the play button. You can go through it frame by frame if you like if you're worried at any point the mask might fail. We'll then repeat this process for the second eye. For those who aren't using After Effects CC, you'll have to either animate a mask path or make a motion mask. I explain how to do that in this episode here. We'll then hit F and feather them both out around two pixels. Now that we have our masks tracked, let's head up to Effect, Stylize and add a glow. We'll then change some settings. Let's change the threshold to 10.2, the radius to 18 and the intensity to 10. But by all means, play around and find the right settings for you guys. It's all individual. From there, we'll head to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and add a Gaussian Blur and crank that up to 6. If we check out a preview now, you see we have some nice glowy eyes going on, but it needs a cherry on top. Let's then add two adjustment layers. We'll then select one, head up to Effect, Generate and add a CC light rays. We'll then change the intensity to 70, the radius to 14, the warp softness to 75, and then uncheck color from source. We'll then make the color a fiery orangey yellow type. Now to bring those nulls back into play. We'll select both those nulls and hit P to bring up their position controls. We'll then hold ALT and click the center stopwatch and then we'll pick whip that to the right eye null position. To do the left eye, we simply couple the light rays from the first adjustment layer, paste it onto the second, hold ALT and click that stopwatch to remove the animation. Hold ALT again, click the center stopwatch and then pick whip that one to the left eye null. We'll then trim those adjustment layers to meet up with our glowing eyes. We now have fiery glowing eyes. Neat, huh? Okay, we have our eyes all sorted. Now let's add the fire. Okay, time to get fired up, guys. In the project window, you can see three different movie files from the download pack. Head, left, and right. Let's start with the head. 
We'll scrub forward on the timeline to the point where you want to start to flame on. This looks pretty good. We'll then hold shift and drag and drop our head clip at this point. We'll then change the transfer mode to screen. We'll then start using our scale and position controls to get this bad boy exactly where we want it. Once you're happy, time to grab the pen tool and cut a mask out to show your face a little bit better. We'll then collapse down the mask menu, change the transfer mode to subtract, We'll then hit F and feather that out around 100 pixels, so that way the flames and our face blend nicely without overpowering each other. Once you're happy, head up to Effect, Color Correction, and I'm going to add a Hue and Saturation, and just bump the saturation down about 20 points, because the fire seems a little bit too colourful for my liking. We'll then finish the head off by hitting Ctrl D, duplicating a head fire, hit F, and we'll bring the feather down on this clip to 55 pixels, just to thicken that fire up a little bit. From there, let's do our right hand next. Scrub back to that point where our head fire starts, drag and drop our right hand in, and change the transfer mode to screen. I'm going to trim the first couple of frames just out of personal preference, because I don't like them. We'll then use the position, rotation, and scale controls to match up with our hands. The only difference this time between the head and our hands is we're going to hit the stopwatch on position and rotation, and go frame by frame, matching our hand movements as best we can, until they become completely still. If you need to adjust the scales during this process, go for it, I won't stop you. Once you're done with that one, head up to the left hand and repeat the same process. Now that both hands are done, we'll turn on motion blur for both layers, we'll then copy those human saturation settings from our head flame and paste them on both. And our last step with those flames, duplicate both of those clips on top of each other. Done! See how easy that was? Now that we have our fire all pretty and whatnot, it's time to add two more things. A little heat distortion and some extra light fall off on our hands and face. So let's start with our heat distortion. We'll head up, add a new adjustment layer, and then let's draw a quick mask around where we want the distortion to affect. Making sure you don't go outside the comp as it will bend the border and look like poo. We'll then hit F and feather that out around 50 pixels to keep it nice and smooth. Once you're done, head up to effect, Distort and add Turbulent Displace. We'll then change some settings. Let's change the displacement to Twist, the amount to minus 6, and the size to 25. We'll then trim the clip to start roughly 2 frames into your fire. We'll then head up, hit the stopwatch on Evolution, head to the end of the clip, and then crank that up to 2. We now have a bit of heat warp action happening. Now for that light fall off. Let's once again head up, add a new adjustment layer. We'll then trim the clip to start at the same point as our flame on. We'll then scrub forward to the point where our hands are completely still. Let's head up, grab that pen tool. We'll then draw some rough masks around our hands and our actor's face. Hit F and feather out each around 30 to 50 pixels, depending on what your shot looks like. From there, let's jump up to effect, color correction and let's add exposure. I've cranked the exposure up to 0.65 and the gamma up to 1.03. You'll have to have a play with the exposure and the gamma correction to see what works for your individual shot. But if I flip back and forth between the effect on and the effect off, you can see what we're going for. And there's no need to animate this unless you want to, as our hands and head don't move enough to bother really. Now you may have noticed in the opening shot that I had some embers floating up from my hands and my head. So here's how we do that. I've got a pretty sweet ember file here that's already pre-keyed and alpha channeled. I got it from this site called rodipolis.com. They actually have a free fire effects pre-keyed stock footage package for you to download for free. So why not? So let's drag and drop our ember footage straight in on top of everything and then trim it so it starts when our fire does. We'll then position it in place over our left hand and then change the transfer mode to screen just to soften it a bit. We'll then head up to effect Blur and sharpen and add a camera lens blur and adjust it to 2. Just so it doesn't look so sharp in comparison to the fire. And you'll never guess what we do next. That's right, duplicate it, bring it over to the other hand, and then duplicate it again, and bring it up to the head. Our final step here is just a subtle one. We'll head up, grab a new adjustment layer, scrub to the first part of our flame on, and then trim the layer so it only lasts, say, one frame. We'll then jump up to Effect, Generate, and add one last CC light rays. We'll then throw it in right on the face. 
I'll crank the intensity up to blow it out a little bit, say 150. And that's it. It just gives you a little flash frame and I think it adds a little spark to the shot. Now, let's check out our final shot. <sighs> it's cold in here. Oh, hang on a sec. Mm, that's much better. So that's a pretty basic firestorm effect. If you've seen our Super Mario Fireball, it's very similar in its awesomeness. Now before we go, I have an announcement. My buddy Mike has launched a practical effects, props and equipment building channel called Film Masters. You remember seeing him on Food Battle, you know, kicking my ass. His first video is on making your own teleprompter for real low cheap. So let's check out a snippet from Mike. Thanks very much for the plug there, Grant. My name is Michael, I'm the host of Film Masters. If you've come here because you want to see boobs, it's um, that's the wrong channel. That's RedTube, not YouTube. Anyway, if you're interested in making movies with a budget, you know, like a five bucks or, you know, borrowing your mum's camera and stuff like that, this is the channel for you. We'll be learning a lot of practical facts, how certain effects have been put together in the movies. If you're interested, simply put what it is that you'd like to see us make and create down the bottom of this video somewhere or any other video that you see. We also have a Facebook channel over here somewhere. Um, Film Masters, if you're interested. Anyhow, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Um, there's new videos coming out very shortly on how to make teleprompters and stuff. So who wouldn't want to subscribe to that? Just saying. Now you can click here to go straight to that video if you're interested. It's good stuff. And if you have a channel that you'd like highlighted on the show with some cool content, drop me a line on Twitter or the Facebook page. Who knows? It might show up in the next episode. As always, gang, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, light up that subscribe button and stay tuned for next week because things might be getting a little cold. You know what I'm saying? Eh? Eh? Keep learning. Thank you.